we can take this uh, impermeabil impermeability theorem a little bit further uh, by uh, looking at another form of the governing equations in isentropic coordinate with uh, hydrostatic balance, so full form equation. So that looks uh, this way, the acceleration term balanced by uh, the PVS uh, attraction term. Uh, so K uh, tilde here is normal to the isentropic uh, surface. So you are talking about uh, the uh, term uh, that is uh, parallel to the uh, uh, isentropic surfaces and uh, divergence of m plus ke where ke is the kinetic energy of the flow on the isentropic surface m is something called Montgomery stream function which is CPT plus phi where phi is the geopotential gz so that's like a dry static energy kind of term uh, minus uh, theta dot the heating term uh, so this is the uh, generation term and this is the friction term so that diabetic heating term and the dissipation term so this equation uh, can be written this way in the zonal component this is the vector form this is the zonal component uh, upper level zonal winds are related to the meridional advection of the PVS and this stream function kinetic energy term and this uh, diabetic heating term uh, in the zonal direction and the dissipation term by setting a simple form of dissipation we can get a pretty amazing result so just assume a linear friction form uh, fx equals minus gamma u the, with some uh, coefficient gamma uh, which is done pretty uh, commonly in uh, the tropics, for example, uh, the model of Kane Zbiak for El Nino uses uh, something like this. Many ocean models use this in various simplified contexts and so on. So that gives us, when you integrate in the zonal with the uh, earlier idea of uh, looking at the uh, zonal averaging over recurrent periods, uh, you see that the zonal mean u is approximately equal to 1 over gamma times the meridional uh, advection term minus the uh, diabetic term and in the case of uh, uh, adiabatic uh, uh, situation this goes to zero and I, let me make sure that's what uh, this is so yes if the system is adiabatic then this goes to zero then uh, the zonal average u is uh, nearly equal to 1 over gamma qs v. That's a stunning result. That is basically saying uh, with this dissipation term, uh, the dissipation, the meridional advection and dissipation of the PVS uh, is part of the maintenance of the zonal mean uh, zonal circulation. Okay? The think about it. So we have PVS being advected back and forth and nearly zero across the latitude line on an isentrope but uh, the dissipation of PVS is a key term in maintaining the zonal mean zonal uh, winds. In summary it appears that the mass flux imposed by a mean meridional circulation uh, that we looked at leads to PV fluxes into and out of the tropics that closely balance each other as a result of the global conservation of PVS or PV substance that uh, we looked at. Furthermore, the dissipation of PV over the tropics associated with these PV fluxes into and out of the tropics helps maintain the overall upper tropospheric circulation. This has all kinds of consequences that we will see later on, but it's a really amazing findings of how the tropics and extratropics are communicating and how the input from the extratropics into the tropics and the tropics into the extratropics together are creating these very special situations in the uh, upper atmosphere. Okay, So this can be now taken uh, to a, a few more uh, points we can make with the shallow fluid experiments, uh, a model uh, that is developed by Webster and Chang and other people uh, that is shown in uh, Appendix G, which I have not shown in detail here for simplicity or for keeping this clean, uh, you can look it up. 
So there you can uh, again uh, look at our mass function that we used before with the Dirac delta at the equator and uh, so source at the equator and sinks at latitudes plus minus phi s in a shallow fluid. So this time we are explicitly saying shallow fluid because then there is no uh, vertical gradients that uh, we have to or the um, cross isentropic gradients we, we have to worry about it's all just uh, along the isentropes right so looking at our uh, momentum equation again uh, uh, in an isentropic coordinate hydrostatic uh, del v tilde del v tilde dt minus q h h k tilde cross v tilde where k is again this vector normal to the isentropic surface h is the uh, uh, mean depth or the uh, isentropic depth because this is the potential vorticity in a shallow fluid is related to the divergence of the kinetic energy v uh, tilde squared plus uh, gh the geopotential minus gamma v tilde where we are again writing friction uh, in a simple uh, form uh, the uh, mass continuity equation in this case is this uh, del h del t plus the divergence term equal to the mass source sink the uh, vorticity now potential vorticity in this case is eta or h which is our original definition if you remember zeta plus beta y divided by h where where we said that the thickness of the layer in a stratified fluid uh, allows you to talk about potential vorticity as opposed to uh, just vorticity because as we said as the thickness changes the vorticity changes so that's the idea of so f plus zeta or h which we had seen before right remember again the uh, the uh, analogy of the ice skater who can change vorticity by changing uh, the shape of her body uh, that's the same thing as changing h okay and the uh, mass source in this case can be just written as h minus h e or uh, tau uh, the time scale where h e is related to the total depth plus a forcing amplitude and a function of uh, longitude and latitude with prescribed uh, scales in each direction l lambda and l phi these are it's just a model to make certain points so i'm not going to go into details we'll just get to the physics in a hurry but here is our um, potential uh, the diabetic term uh, in an adiabatic situation that's going to go to uh, zero so we're looking at a shallow uh, water model uh, adiabatic with a mass flux okay taking the curl of uh, equation 11 uh, 18 which I don't know if I want to go all the way back to there is our full equation of uh, hydrostatic isentropic equation of motion um, and uh, analogous to the 11.17 PVS conservation equation we end up with uh, this which is very similar to that equation where we had JT here instead we are writing it explicitly as uh, the zonal advection term and JF the dissipation term and QH in this case is H times Q again it's a PVS it's a substance anytime you have it integrated over uh, a mass uh, it becomes PV substance as opposed to just PV right so the dissipation term is again written as minus Fy Fx 0 because this uh, in a shallow fluid you don't have um, dissipation in the direction of the uh, normal to isen uh, the isentrope okay so again simplify the dissipation term as minus gamma V tilde and um, Assuming that advective PV fluxes dominate as before, we had said JA is much greater than J theta and JF. In this case, J theta is zero. Uh, we have set adiabatic, uh, diabatic term to uh, zero. So we end up with uh, this equation, uh, it's very similar to 11.17, where we had PVS and JA, uh, total J. Uh, here we just have the zonal. Uh, sorry the divergence term is not uh, zonal this is a, a vector so we have to be careful 
verticity vector and the mass continuity equation. Um, so if we do the averaging that we talked about before, then we can again end up with this term being equal to uh, zero. Okay, uh, let me confirm that. Yes, so again, if we uh, assume the recurrent solutions like before, we can do the little trick of integrating over a certain period and reduce uh, the time The time term dis disappears. So we end up with this relation from this uh, equation, uh, which is uh, then the uh, mass continuity equation simplifies to uh, this term. So these two last expressions basically imply that when advective processes are dominant, there cannot be circulation everywhere that advects PVS poleward, which we had seen before as well. And this shallow water model is just affirming that. So uh, we took the full equation still, we are still uh, taking the full equation, and we are saying that the PVS advection cannot be unidirectional uh, poleward uh, uh, in this case. There has to be a compensating return flow. Uh, alternating positive and negative HQH fluxes are necessary for global balance. So this is just confirming what we saw from observations and confirming what we had derived from uh, the uh, full equations of motion on an isentropic coordinate. We are now doing it on a shallow water system because now we can take this shallow water system and impose heating uh, in the tropics and off the equator to simulate the monsoonal circulation and show some interesting uh, extension of this basic idea. Okay, let's do that in the next podcast.